Fired up. Oh, ready up. Let me start now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Welcome everyone to the film Vault. That is Anderson. I'm Brian Bishop, your host for today. Oh, just in time for the summer season, in time for Memorial Day weekend. If you're listening to this right away, top five barbecue scenes. Top five barbecues. Yes, that's exciting. right. Barbecue also, scenes, a lot of them. You actually came up with this topic uh, a few months ago, and then we decided to push it, right? Indeed, and also appropriate with uh, the, the new Fast and Furious movie coming out, because I don't think any franchise has ever leaned as heavily on the barbecue. I see a lot of barbecue representation in doing my research for barbecue scenes. Yes, you're, you're correct in that, Brian. Nothing says America more like a barbecue, right? Yeah, family. Or family. It's a, it's a gathering of the family, so I, it makes sense. Can you imagine whoever uh, came up with that uh, when they wrote that scene? They're like, this is perfect. It's all just coming together. I mean, they're a family, and they're at a family cookout. I mean, we're all going to be able to appreciate this and recognize this and uh, be able to relate to this because it's American. That's right. It doesn't really... We're talking about Fast X again? What are we doing? But does it does it lean into like what it is to be... Like, is there a lot of stuff talking about America? Because, I mean... It's right there, right? But it doesn't really seem to go down that path. Is this like a no. liberal version of that? No, it's, it's like it's liberal. fairly apolitical. I mean, I guess it appeals more to, you know, um, uh, muscle car enthusiasts. Mm-hmm. But at this point, maybe it doesn't. I don't know. It feels fairly apolitical. The movie takes place mostly in Rome. Remember how I talked about how we kind of screwed listener Nick eats cake uh, out of his pick, which yes. was a girl because now it's Matt Rixner's pick and cool. will forever be uh, thought of as Matt Rixner's pick. Sure. Not only did I screw him there, but I screwed him last week or I mean uh, last episode by not officially assigning you Nick, Nick eats cakes new pick, oh. which is bean pole, which is another movie oh. I've been told to see for uh, a number of years now. So we will be seeing bean pole for uh, Nick eats cake. It is available. I forget where it's available streaming. Somewhere. Showtime. I Showtime. Think. I think so you can get your little seven day, or you already have Showtime if you're like excited because because Dexter came back. Dexter came back and I didn't hear one person talk about it. Really? Yeah. Well, you can also rent Beanpole uh, across uh, multiple platforms. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much. And then uh, Brian, real quick, hey. I have a feeling I know how this is going to go and where this is going to go. But in case you uh, were not aware and you're curious, because I know you're making a documentary on last week's uh, Loaded for Bear, let's make this movie episode, which is part of this feed now, Brian. Um, I sat by myself for 20 minutes on that particular episode, talking about the six different modes of document documentaries and what Ooh. that means. Are you familiar with the different modes of documentary? I'm really not sure what documentary is. Different please. types of documentaries. No, tell me. I'm not going to go into it, but I mean, if you're interested, God there's, I, uh, I'm on there uh, discussing it. So Extemporaneously, just off the top of your head. No, of course not. I did a bunch of research, and but I credited the guy Nichols who came not up with, with it. Not with anyone else. Yeah, but, that's the know. thing. Yeah, I, I sit down, and I, I'm like... Let's keep this to 15 minutes. Next thing you know, it's like I look over and it's 22 minutes. Like, I'm still talking about. But it's usually pointed. It's not like I'm just hoping that right. something comes up, right? Like Bill Burr style. I don't, I don't have that in me. But, yeah, I try, going somewhere. try and make it educational. And then most recently, it was the six different types of documentaries that have been identified uh, by a very uh, smart uh, documentary theorist. Can you just tell me the sex? No, I can't. But I can tell you that they're all represented and talked about. You I'm might trying, learn something, Brian. I'm trying to give you a tease here. A plug. No, you want me to do the episode. Spend describe, 20 minutes doing it. Talk, name the six and then describe the meat briefly. Mm-hmm. If you could. Right now. So, how do you, what's, your, what's your criteria here? I almost really... Okay. How do you involve grilling meat? Talking about barbecues. Uh, <laughs> that's a good criteria. Grilling and meat should be... However, you know what? I don't know if I can be there for all of my six, all of my oh, really? five. I think one of mine actually might not have any meat being grilled. Well, one of mine shows no food at all. So is, your, is anyone's guess what? I also dug deep for one of mine. Deep pull. Deep. Well, what does that mean? Like you looked harder than you did for the others? No. Or? Well, I thought of it actually right away, but I'm like, oh, well, this is, there's no one else is going to have this. Is that why it's on your list? Because I find myself almost being guilty of that sometimes where it's like, is this only on your list because it's a, like you, you had to dig real deep and you're proud of yourself or does it belong here? You, you, know, know? you know me all too well. <laughs> I'm sure I've been guilty of it, but I don't think I try. I try not to because I identify it as what it is, and I try and ex- expel it. You know, are, what I mean? all, are all of yours barbecues you personally would like to attend? I mean, look who you're talking to. Yeah, I will attend anything for a story or to like you know meet interesting people or to retell what I experienced. Okay. So yes, there's nothing I, I wouldn't not want okay. to be at. There's some of mine I very much do, and some I very much do not. Hmm. Hmm. 
Okay, what I thought for sure was going to be my number one, I couldn't place them. And this is kind of interesting. Maybe this has to do with getting old. I don't know. From the moment that you brought this up a number of weeks ago, I'm like, I know what my number one is. I just got to figure out what movie that is. Okay, what happens? Turns out it's not a movie, and there's no visual representation of the actual scene (laughs) other than Eddie Murphy wearing a red leather matching top and bottom telling the story of Now That's a Fire. And that, in my head, was the funniest uh, barbecue scene I've ever seen because okay. I visualize it and I saw it at such a young age and I still think of that barbecue Pin scene the picture in your mind. With, <laughs> with, with his, Eddie Murphy's delirious. family. Yeah. They're raw. Deli- uh, raw. It's delirious. Okay. Shit. It was the first one. But that was, that played out so I could picture the character. I just couldn't place the faces. I couldn't even place Eddie Murphy's face. It lived face. in your mind. It lived in my mind and I'm like, I, I can't wait to find this scene and then I, it just kept being delirious. I'm like, I guess that I just invented that as a movie because it was so deep in my, my mind from seeing this wow. so long ago. So. so is this ultimately a disappointing list for you? Almost put it on the list though, but I'm like, you know what? IMDb calls it a TV special. I think that I, I can't do that. I can't have that as a top five scene. Uh, no, good good list. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of my list. You? Same. I think I might have one crossover. How many, uh, how many clips you got? Just one. Well, you need to send it to me. Cause I did. Oh, there, there it is. <laughs> All right. Uh, there's at least one movie you have not seen on my list. One movie I think maybe I signed you years ago. And then one movie we, we both recently saw. Oh, oh, no. That might be the crossover. <laughs> All right, let's get to this. I'm kind of excited now. All right. You want to dive in? Yes. Unfortunately, my, the one I alluded to is the number five. I didn't push record. We should also mention that Avery is uh, not here. He got confused somehow. He thought that we were doing something to do with ladies. Like he thought we were doing B cup. What what do you think? Top five, yeah, uh, big busty queens. Yeah, but we're like, no, dude, it's all about the dudes and the grill. BBQ means barbecue. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, he didn't. He didn't hear that. He was already out the door. No, I told you. He was like, he left us just in case. So I'm pushing the buttons uh, poorly over here. I don't like it not having Avery here. Doesn't feel like we're actually doing a show, you know what I mean? Really? I just feel like I'm visiting you. I like it a lot more. It feels In- intimate. Feels like a show when we have somebody yawning next to it's us. You know what I mean? <laughs> we have someone tuning out just next to us. Tuning up. I mean, it always happens with every every producer that anyone ever has. Like, no matter how scintillating or titillating the show can be, like they're going to be bored if they're not, especially if they're performers, which Avery is. Like, uh, remember how how quickly Logan got super bored with the show? Almost before I started. And I remember like. And then he went on to produce for seven more years. Defending, yeah, maybe eight. <laughs> Defending myself with uh, Adam and Drew back in the day, like, and even before them, Pharrell, like, oh, I'm not bored. And they would get mad. And now, 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 here, here, yeah. all these, yeah, it, I feel it. It's painful. But what can you do? It's, it's, uh, it's, it's ubiquitous, universal. Speaking of which, uh, I, I would like to, uh, real quick, just ask Kayla to wake up, please. Been brought to my attention that uh, a listener has, has, has a wife who falls asleep to this program. Oh. So, Kayla, wake up! Kayla, come on, step to it. Yeah. All right, what's Kid, your number five? Kids are on fire and the house is missing. Oh, but the show's on fire because it's scintillating, as All Brian right. suggested. Let's go! Barbecues! Speaking of, speaking of fire. Let's do barbecues, yeah. Number five for me. That's a fire! Number five for me is a film we recently saw together. Mm-hmm. Talking where's about. The, where's this on my list? Because I might just move it. Over. Yeah, it's my number five as well, Brian. All Brad. right, Final Destination 2. That's right. I don't know if this counts as a spoiler, um, but it is the final scene of the film. So let's just um, skirt around it by skirt steak. Skirt around it by saying. Well, I mean, anyone who watches it who remembers you saying, as soon as the movie's about to end, it's the last scene, and they see there's a barbecue, they'll know. It doesn't come as a surprise. It does not come as a surprise. I mean, that's not the point of Final Destination, right? No, far from it. There are a lot of misdirects moments before they'll like you know have like four or five setups that don't pay off until the sixth one does pay off but i mean there's implosion at the it makes no sense at all a perfectly pleasant backyard barbecue was ruined when a uh young boy untimely explosion uh, uh kills a young boy uh launching his charred dismembered arm onto his mother's plate yeah he exploded from inside so for that to be have actually happened somehow this this what they don't talk about is he was obviously keistering <laughs> the the gas tank the right like when no one was looking he was like let's see if i could fit this thing like yeah. on my shirt maybe or like maybe what what's it feel like to be pregnant that's right oh i'll try this no yeah, right in the belly button yeah because yeah. he exploded from the inside which is uh, comical those movies are comical right they're supposed to be funny i think they're supposed to be yes i enjoyed the laugh well we're gonna just skip right through this a little bit too quick Brad, right because that's my number five as well what's your number 
Number four. Oh. Don't yawn. Yeah, <laughs> it's my clip. It was, oh, it is? Clip. Number four for me, my deep pull. I'm so, no, wait, wait, wait. I'm wait, just wait, cute. I'm, wait, don't wait, tell me how to do wait. my job, all right? Overnight. Overnight, the documentary about Troy Duffy, uh, the uh, maker, the writer, the auteur behind uh, Boondock Saints. Uh, the subtitle, Anderson, uh, tells us that uh, we're at the, quote, film deal barbecue. This is where uh, Troy has signed his film deal with Miramax Picture, and now he's uh, looking to cast his film, and he has a, a, a barbecue in the backyard with all of his uh, hooligan friends, and Mark Wahlberg is there, and John Goodman is there, and uh, they stick out like sore thumbs, but uh, Mark Wahlberg is uh, there ostensibly to talk about the role, talk about the movie, uh, perhaps being involved in Boondock Saints, uh, as maybe if, if you're aware of how the film turned out. Right. It didn't work. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, you're, here... You're spoiling your first two movies you've discussed so far. So. What is that? What's that? Oh, uh, I spoiled Boondock Saints. I don't know if you need to. By saying that Mark Wahlberg is not in it. I have something I want to talk to you about, but I don't want to cut you off because it's such a you've done so much lead up to your clips. So let's get to that. And then so I here is the clip uh, at the end of the barbecue. Uh, the filmmakers pull Mark Wahlberg aside and do a little interview with him. This last 30 seconds, uh, Anderson, see how many times, how many times do you think... Um, Mark Wahlberg utters the phrase, you know, in 30 seconds. Are we going to count? Over, under. 30 seconds, six. Okay, let's hear it. Uh Uh-oh. Oh, I nailed it. Nailed it with six. That's one every Brian, five seconds. That's, yeah, that's prime example of one that doesn't deserve to be on the list. No, the barbecue scene is funny seeing like... You can't even see that they're at a barbecue, really. It's just... No, they're not in that particular clip. That's at the end of the barbecue. The barbecue precedes that, and uh, you see Mark Wahlberg interacting awkwardly with Troy Duffy and you all know. of his goons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. John Goodman doesn't want to be there. It's fun. You know. Yeah, you know. Six times. All right. Well, you know, people have nervous sticks. I bet you if, if, if he did, if he had, was asked the exact same question today, uh, he would probably not probably say, you know, at all. I bet he's probably found probably a new word. Be to the exact same way. I doubt it. You know? How much fun was he in that movie that we just watched? What movie did we watch? The 90s movie. Shouldn't have brought that up because we're both drawing a blank. It was the uh, the action movie. that was like a comedy, really. Oh, the, oh, yeah. The big hit. The big hit. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. Yeah, that was, was a lot fun. of fun. It was fun. He was peak Wal- Marky Wahlberg. He might have chosen that over, uh, over. Uh, Could be. Boondock Saints. I wonder if it lines up. Because mm-hmm. that was his first movie after Boogie Nights. Hmm. You know. Yeah. I don't know. All right, let's uh, let's move Number on four, four. with the list. Oh, here's what I want to talk to you about, and uh, I will forget. I have a lot on my mind, and you know, I, I bust your balls a lot, and I, you know, I can I can cut that. I'm in charge, so I can cut this out if you don't want to talk about All this. Right. But uh, have you talked to like a doctor about the uh, the the the, the the voice and how you're sounding more like Poindexter than you ever have in your life. That is funny. No, I have not talked to a doctor. You about should that. bring that up because I hear it and I talk to you, you know, regularly and uh, I can tell it. I, I, it's the people who see you every day won't mm-hmm. notice, but the people who see you like once a week, like I do and hear you once a week, like you sound much mm-hmm. more different just recently. It's weird. So yeah. I don't know if something's going on in there. No, it's, you know, it's funny. Cause it's when I'm, it's typically when I'm reading or when I'm like looking down, if I was looking up at Either you, way. it wouldn't be, wouldn't be much thing. of a, uh, much of an issue. Well, you see how like you used to look down before, unless that's a new thing. You've never looked down before and talked. What do you mean? I'm saying that you've always looked down and oh, talked, I and see. you've never made that sound. So it's still oh, something see. that may, you might want to get looked at. It's weird though, because so for for the I had COVID in 2021, I think, mm-hmm. and ever since my nose has been running a lot, which you've observed, and it recently stopped. Like it, it finally stopped running every day, all day. And uh, maybe it's uh, coincides. Maybe my nasal passages are opening up. <laughs> With a sniff. That was probably the most the appropriate, most appropriate sniff, sniff you've ever done. <laughs> it's the most well timed sniff. All right, number four for me is a, uh, a fun one. It is not just vacation, it's National Lampoon's vacation, Brian. 
1983, uh, if you recall, uh, the Cousin whole family Eddie. is back there. Cousin Eddie. Now, this is my my pick that I don't know if any meat is actually being cooked because I have the clip, but I don't know if it's, it's really a appropriate place to play it because uh, it kind of goes on and on. Now I kind of wish I had it. Anyways. But uh, Hamburger Helper is served. Hamburger Helper, right, which he's, uh, Cousin Eddie says, I don't you know, even, it doesn't really need the, the hamburger at all. It helps it's itself. itself. It's just fine by itself. So I don't know if there's any meat in the Hamburger Helper. It's like noodles and stuff and powder, right? I don't know. It's been a number of years since I yeah, used that Hamburger Helper. It's kind of Sloppy Joe-esque, the, what they're eating in, in the movie. So, but I don't think there's an actual, like, patty or meat involved. I agree. Uh, and then Vicky, who is, uh, I guess, Eddie's daughter is in there, and she remember she's just stirring, stirring the lemonade. with her whole, is this on your list? Or no. Is, okay, no, you just I'm remember I'm familiar well. with the scene. Because you probably saw it this week, and he's <laughs> she's not. stirring, and and uh, he's he, he's asking her to stop. Vicky, could you please stop uh, with the stirring? It, very very good, and uh, it just and then Aunt Edna comes, and Aunt, and then she's the second half of that scene, uh, which I wouldn't have played uh, because she just comes out and she's she's rude to him, but it, it's no longer specifically about what's going on with the food that makes it a barbecue, but. Uh, I thought it was a good representation of, uh, you know, what, what makes an American barbecue. And go. a lot of the time it's, you know, people you are feeding you that you're not really that familiar with. And they're going to feed you their style well, of food. What they decide is barbecue food. It was very funny. A mm. very funny scene. I think my favorite was the hand. Vicky with yeah. the hand. That was the thing that's put it over the top. The scene. Yeah. Good scene. Yeah. That's my number four, Brad. What do you got there? Number three for me, a film you have not seen. Mm. In fact, I, d- I decided this will be on our short, short list, my short list of... Uh, Hold for plane. Oh, the plane, yeah. I'm, just, I, I'm just leaving doors open. Like, I've not you been really closing are. doors or windows. Remember how crazy I used to yeah, be about it? Yeah, I used to hermetically and seal. Until I hear a complaint from one of you guys that it's, like, really ruining the show, we're going to be comfortable uh, as far as temperature goes on. Mm, my number three... Stop looking down, please. Sorry. My number three... Uh-huh. It's a film you have not seen. However, I have added it to my short list of movies we should watch as a watch along. Okay. I, f- I kind of feel like the, the sweet spot is ridiculous movies, absurd movies, movies that are, lend themselves to the visual, of course. I'm talking about Varsity Blues. Mm, mm. I, I believe I have seen this. You really? I think so. I think so. Hmm. I get it confused with a movie that got uh, in trouble because like, one of the pranks they, or one of the things they were doing for rushing or something Necessary was lame. Roughness. No, 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 no. The program. The program. I get the Varsity Blues and the program confused quite a bit. They're both very similar movies in my head. Do I need to see this? Go go ahead with the... Uh, no, this is not a good movie. Oh, uh, then... But it's fun mm-hmm. and uh, a, a perfect for a watch-along. Oh, for a watch-along. Yeah, yes, yeah, because yes, yes. this is a uh, an absurd film. Mm-hmm. And the uh, barbecue scene really encapsulates that absurdity. So... Um, <laughs> James Van Der Beek is the backup quarterback. Okay. And Paul Walker is the starting quarterback. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're, their dads are like best friends. So they're, oh, they're frenemies. So they're, uh, they're having a barbecue in the backyard. They're in Texas. And uh, the, 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 the alpha male, Paul Walker's dad, whose house it is, decides, he's like, man, remember the good old days playing football? Hey, son, hit me with the right butt nook on three. And he runs a pattern. And, you know, Paul Walker passes him the ball. And then he's like, an argument ensues about who should be the starting quarterback amongst the dads. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, the, the, then he d- they say, well, let's settle this right here now. Y'all remember William Tell? And he puts a, a beer can, a Lone Star beer can on his head. He's like, son, knock the ball off my head. Mm-hmm. And Paul Walker throws a perfect pass and knocks the uh, can off. And they're like, all right, now your turn. And um, uh, uh, Vanderbeek's like, dad, this is stupid. He's like, just do it, son. Be a winner. Mm-hmm. And it's it's everything that makes this movie absurd. It's over-the-top characters, things people would never say or do, uh, uh, melodrama, and uh, the dad puts a uh, beer can on his head, and he's like, come on, son. Be a winner. And uh, mocks, uh, mocks him, uh, James Vanderbeek, who was uh, rejecting all things Texas football culture, even though he's on the team, right. uh, throws a perfect strike at the bridge of the dad's nose. On purpose? Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Well, it's not explicit. Ambiguous? You get, you get the idea that it's on purpose. You got to, You weren't looking down. You said it. Idea, idea. You get the but, idea that it's on purpose. But you got to get that checked out. I know. Uh, but uh, you get the idea, it, but it's not, ex, like, you're not sure? It's pretty. Well, like, we'll see it. We will? Oh, uh, we're going to watch it yeah, with the, the watch along. Okay. Sure. It sounds very similar to my own experience with uh, playing football and oh, maybe you being see forced some, uh, into being a quarterback and... Yeah. 
not wanting to do it at all, but having a dad who was like forcing my. Am I gonna am I gonna like this Vanderbeek character? Be a winner, son. Yeah, gonna, yeah, Mox is the uh, hero of the film. Oh, he's he is? like the Kendall Roy. No, well, you think Kendall Roy is the yeah. hero of? He might not be wrong. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I think it's devoid of heroes, to be honest. Mm. Yeah, talking about the old uh, succession over there. All right, number. Uh, <clears throat> Good pick, Brian. I have no context because okay. I don't know if I've seen it. If I have it, or I do not remember. What was that? I don't know. Maybe a little karma for talking. I'm you not talking shit. I'm not talking shit. I just know the way my brain works. If I don't bring it up in the moment on air, like I said, I can cut all that. If you if you have, I don't. You want me to cut all of it? Avery should cut it. He's not going okay. to. Should I? I, no, I can cut I it. Care. Okay. Plus, you know, maybe it'll get listeners to 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 have you get checked out as well. Okay. Right? Yeah. I want to. But maybe that's karma. I just breathe in like a hair from my microphone like into my throat. Oh, whose voice now. is fucked up now? Oh, that's right. <laughs> it's me. Atticus just this morning was like screaming, yelling at me to drink water because my voice was very raspy right. when I grew up, when I woke up this morning. Drink some water, Eddie. Just Thin dead. Ounces. Like I was scaring him because I, I was so hoarse. Please, Daddy, Thin please ounces. drink some water. I'm like, all right, buddy. All right, number uh, number three for me. Jeez, we're trucking here, Bri Bri. Let's do it. Um, all right, last week. Or two weeks ago on the program when we were doing uh, irresponsible gun, you know, toting uh, scenes. Gun handling, yes. Gun, gun handling scenes. Uh, we all forgot to include uh, Goodfellas, where Tommy was with True. Spida. Two separate scenes. One, two separate shooting scenes. Both scenes could be considered, like, they're kind of they're, one, they're, even they're, though yeah, there's they're, like they're space in between them. Yeah. They are paired. I'm not forgetting about Goodfellas this week. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, the Goodfellas uh, Italian barbecue scene is so good. It is so good. And instead of, you know, the American hot dogs and hamburgers, they got the uh, the Italian the sausage, sausage and it's like into the ring. That's right. And it's, it's a just spiral shape. All looks so good. And they got the, the wise guys out there. One, some, one guy just standing there with shirts. He's just got no shirt. because He's, he's just, just got suspenders. Just suspenders, exactly. And uh, you got the VO there from, from uh, Hank Hill, who's mm-hmm. kind of explaining one of the most explicit, interesting points of the entire movie, really, about what good fellows are and what the mafia is yep. and what they do. And he just... Breaks it down so succinctly and so simply, and it, and, and it was it's such good writing because he goes, he, he leads with what the FBI never understood, and that just makes everyone perk up. Like yeah. I want to know oh, what the oh, FBI yeah, didn't yeah. know, right? And then he continues with a very simple explanation of what the mafia does, which is just they're the police for the police uh, for wise guys for guys who can't go to the actual police. So, uh, but they're all just sitting around, and it's just peak Scorsese. I mean, what am I, am I saying anything uh, yeah. that uh, anyone doesn't know already? I remember back uh, during COVID, we couldn't gamble on movies because new movies weren't coming out in the right. theaters, and we would yeah. gamble on what percentage of the listenership I'd seen. have seen. Yeah, how, Goodfellas. What do you think? Not that we'll ever know, but ninety-five percent. I'd say ninety-nine. Hmm. Who's listening to this that hasn't well, seen Goodfellas? I only said ninety-five because it would be like nineteen out of twenty. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a good point. Mm. I was always wrong. I always guessed too high. You always guessed too high. I always guessed way too high, and it was shocking, and it hurt a little bit when I would hear. You're, you're probably right. It's probably like 92, 93, 95. Oh. Plus, every year that goes by, we got younger yeah. listeners. Who like, younger people. Because it's welcome, 1990. Welcome kids. 33 years ago that movie is. Oh, my God. It might be like 70 or something. 70% of our audience has maybe seen Goodfellas. I think, I think it's on. If you have never seen Goodfellas, you are inside for such a treat. I'm so jealous of you. Email Anderson and ask him how you should watch it. I do that. Like I was looking at the poster. I think just like yesterday, or when I was researching for this a couple of days ago, and like one of the, I think the poster on, on Amazon, you get you see De Niro, maybe you see all three of them, but then there's like a on the bottom half of the poster, there's just like a little snub nose, like thirty eight special looking gun or something. Oh really? And I was imagining like because it's not really good representation for what the movie is. Mm. And I was imagining like looking at it, they're going, like, yeah, so that's what my dad likes. He likes that kind of movie, that, that movie. That movie's supposed to be special. Hmm. Trying to imagine what I would think it was if I didn't have a reference. Sure. I wasn't impressed. All the old folks tell, all the boomers tell me it's great. I wasn't excited to see it. I can tell you that when I put myself in that mindset, I'm like, fuck this good fellas, old shit. Oh, but you'd be wrong to think that way. That's right. That movie will ever, forever stand up. Dive in. It, it might be one of the first fun, like classic, well-received movies. You know what I mean? Interesting. Because before it's like you got the Citizen Kane over there. You got the old Godfather and Godfather 2. Uh, it certainly pops, like, for example, like a movie like Rocky, right, which is really crowd-pleasing, is very slow by today's standards. It is slow. Good feel of pops. I, I mean, what... Rocky, I guess, is... But, I mean, that's that, there's a lot of popcorn in, in Rocky, mm-hmm. too. 
uh, Rocky as well, I should say, because not to be confused with Rocky too. But I'm talking about like really, really well received, thought of as like one of the best movies ever made. And Goodfellas is in that conversation with sure. the snobbiest of critics, right? They will put Goodfellas up there, and it might be the first one that comes along in history there where it's that high up and it's that enjoyable and you can laugh and just it be entertained. Maybe aside from like Disney films like Pinocchio, you know what I mean? Consider classics. No, but I'm 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 agreeing with you. I mean, I mean, I've never heard anyone like you know do Citizen Kane, Godfather one and two, Pinocchio. Like right. I, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, Casablanca. These are not fun movies that pop. They're great movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Casablanca is another good example. Yeah. All right, what's your number? Maybe uh, Strange Love. Well, that's a little more subtle. Yeah, I don't think that Strange yeah. Love would make what lists. I was talking about Strange Love with my buddy Paul again just last night. Congratulations again to Paul Harper. Uh, adding, yeah. Adding to the world. Congratulations to my buddy Brian Border for getting very old wi- along with me. So congratulations all around. Yeah. Right, they're due. All right. Um, what's your number three there, my friend? I did number three. It was Varsity Blues. You want That was your number three? You started yeah. this. I did Final Destination, Overnight, and Varsity Blues. All right. Let's take a quick break. Break. Let's just start with the uh, big purchase of the week. Sometimes they do that. Sometimes it makes sense. Someone got themselves a Behringer X-Touch USB soundboard. Basically what we have here with the Roadcaster, but uh, far more uh, technologically advanced, it appears. Certainly more, uh, more, more capabilities. Thank you for getting that and uh, tapping on Amazon banner. We appreciate you and your support. All the things purchased on the Amazon banner link. That exists atop AndersonandBrian.com. Someone got two rolls of 3M heavy duty mounting tape, true cable, uh, Cat 6 riser cable, a uh, thousand feet of it. So uh, good luck with that. Also, a gravity transport bag for wires. Maybe the same person, possibly the same person. Does it defy gravity or is it just called that? I would imagine uh, because it's so light, maybe it, it appears to defy gravity. That, that's the idea behind the nomenclature. You ever try one of those uh, gravity blankets? No. What is a gravity blanket? Oh, Jesus blanket? Christ. What are you, Howard Stern over there? What is a gravity blanket? He just belches in the middle of like a sentence. Is it? Well, no, that's, that's what Stern does. I wasn't uh, it's just that they're really, really heavy weighted blankets, and it makes like oh. some people who have like a lot of stress and stuff feel comfort. Interesting. No, I have not, although I, I like the idea of that. I thought they were called like uh, weighted blankets or whatever. But gravity yeah, blanket maybe. makes sense. Binso metal locker, a full-on metal locker was purchased. Park tool bike inflator as well as park tool bicycle wheel holder. Most likely the same person. Adjustable height, active learning stool, fever tree premium ginger beer. Oh, get the good stuff, you guys. Fever tree makes a good tonic. Makes good stuff. Good. Yeah. It is. It? I don't know. It's like the high-end uh, mixologist use that shit. Hmm. Hogar Labs dehumidifier. Yahitech. Yahi Tech coffee table with hidden compartment. It's a coffee table where the lid, the top just comes off like it's on a hinge, and you can like store kids' toys or whatever in the actual, uh, in the actual coffee table. Yeah, it's very very uh, good use of space. I bet you put stuff in there and you don't see it for years. Eventually. Probably it gathers dust. Giro, Gyro, Giro, Agilis road cycling helmet. Two next pouch car jump starters. Vet Vasigal Vasigal Vas Vasigal. I think I'm pretty sure you nailed it. All, all, these are not words. All in room. <laughs> all in all in all in all in room. Fuck. Kitchen shelf on wheels. Midwest tool and cutlery seamer. That's under the category of nippers and stiffs. Brian. Careful, Brian. It's a real word. And uh, Midwest tool and cutlery seamer tongue. Yeah, uh, was purchased. Tong to tong tong. Vivo Home Blue Garden Bird Bath Superior Pump Utility Pump Dragist Dr- Ice Maker Ice Maker Genuine Joe Towels. I had an ice maker for a while because our ice maker broke in our last house and I didn't want to deal with it. Yeah, like a desktop one or the yeah, it was like one? countertop one and it worked for a while. Was it, was it the little pill ice or was it like the big chunks? So you could pick which Ooh. whichever one you wanted. Yeah, Christy likes the little pills. Yeah, she thinks. Once we get one, an ice maker like that, we'll have made it. Oh, you th- that, yeah. that's all it takes? That's all it takes. Can't you get one right now? Oh, oh it, it has feels, to be a part of the fridge. Yeah, it has to be built uh, in. All right. Yeah, sorry. 
Uh, Rest Med and Mirage FX replacement nasal cushion for a comfort gel mat. How dare you? It's for a CPAP machine. <laughs> Sounds like your nasal is Samsung on a cushion. Samsung right? Galaxy S Pen Folds Edition. And finally, I'm going to nail the post right here. Pull up, boys, potty training pants. Oh, I miss those. I miss those days, and I miss yeah. getting those. I know, just, just pull up underwear. I just pulled a Brian. It's dark outside right now in your neighborhood, and some dude just went rollerblading by like he didn't have a care in the mm. world. Don't like that. Just rollerblading right by. You pay, you, pay, you pay very good property taxes. Very high property taxes, I would imagine. For, uh, maybe. I wouldn't know. Pay property taxes up the butt. I got a rollerblader going through my town. All right, number, uh, what do we, not number. All right, here we go. Here are the movies that were clicked through. This is the last time I talked at y'all. Rope was clicked through, which is one of my favorite, if not maybe, dare I say, my favorite Alfred Hitchcock movie. I love that rope. Love it. Favorite Alfred Hitchcock movie? I think it might be. It's a deep pull. Is it? Well, I mean, deep in the sense that always, it's usually Vertigo or Psycho or, I don't know, Rear Window maybe. Mars Attacks was clicked through as well as Machete. Machete. Cape Fear. I don't know which one, but Cape Fear was clicked through. Mm-hmm. Open Range. Hey, that just came up on the old cinematics over there. The uh, director of Sisu uh, suggested that they all watch Open Range. Once Upon a Time in Mexico uh, was clicked through as well as The Tenant. The Tenant. Edge of Tomorrow was clicked through as well as Sin City, a dame to kill for. Career Opportunities Upgrade. Fuck to the S with the upgrade. upgrade. Fuck to the S. A Star is Born. I don't know which of the four was purchased. (laughs) Or click through, but a star is born was click through. As well as the Adams family, once again, not sure which one. The social network, I know exactly which one that was. Mm. And uh, the social network was click through, as well as missing. I think there's a couple missings that came out recently. Yeah. I don't know which one this is. Sequels. Is this a John, John Cho one, or there's another That's, one? Is that searching? Hmm. Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Amongst Thieves was click through, as well as to catch a killer. Which is called Misanthrope in all parts mm. of the world, except for here domestically. It's called To Catch a Killer. Not a good title. Not a good title. But uh, either way, I'm glad that uh, somebody clicked through because that is a uh, it's, it's a very good movie. Guy Ritchie's The Covenant. Ah, I got to see that. So far, that's uh, I think the mo- I have the most regret about missing that one so far this year. So I'll have to catch up with that soon. Uh-huh. Amelie. I did not miss Fuck to the S with Amelie. It's fantastic. How to Blow Up a Pipeline. Harry and the Hendersons. <laughs> Hell to the S. Yeah, I got to say that because the kids. Because the kids. Uh, and then uh, from hell it came, targets. Fuck to the S with the targets and targets. Ant Ant Man and the Wasp, Quantum Mania, uh, and all of his holes. Oh, that's right. Um, a human being has uh, six holes. He always wanted to have holes. Mm-hmm. That uh, little pink fella, and uh, uh, maybe his wishes were uh, were granted before it's all before it's all over. All right. Uh, hey, thank you very much for clicking through. Hey, bye bye. Hey, back to the program. All right. Why am I being tortured? Oh, hold on a second. No, hold you on. just go. Hold on. No. Hold I need to look something up. I am genuinely excited to watch Beastmaster with you. <laughs> genuinely. <laughs> I'm excited to cross off my list. Oh, here we go. All right. We're back. Welcome back uh, to the show. I'd look up something real quick because the number two for me, it's a film I assigned to Anderson almost nine years ago to the day. Late May 2014, I won gambling apparently, and I assigned you. Do you remember? Not a great movie, but the, you know certain movies are not good, but there's a good movie <laughs> inside a- that you can see. It's like there's a good movie there. There's a good movie trying to break out, yeah. and it just didn't work. But the bones are there. Right. Remember K Pax? Yes, I do remember K I don't remember you and, uh, assigning that to me. Yeah, I assigned that to you. Bananas, 20, right? 2014. He had, he had a banana, husk yeah. and all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, K Pax features a uh, barbecue scene. Uh, Jip, uh, Jip Bridges plays a psychologist or a psychotherapist who um, admittedly pulls a very unorthodox move and invites his uh, new patient, possibly psychotic. To his uh, backyard barbecue. I don't think that time. happens very often. <gasps> Was there a barbecue scene and what about Bob? There had to have been, right? There must have been. There must have been. <coughs> it didn't occur to me. Didn't nothing occur to me nothing either. popped in my mind until this very moment. To, that's a, one of like... Yeah, yeah. How, this, this We're is on how, summer vacation. How it works is like you're, you're think about like fun movies that should have them and then you search and sometimes you come up with nothing. Mm-hmm. I, I have a feeling we come up with nothing because 
neither one of us came up with it. All right. In K-Pax, uh, Kevin Spacey plays a man from outer space. According to him, uh, he is an alien visiting Earth, and he's brought to a, to a mental hospital where Jeff Bridges is his doctor, and Bridges uh, takes a liking to him and invites him over uh, to their house, to his house, for Fourth uh, of July barbecue. Um, Prot uh, is his name, Spacey's name. He uh, charms everyone. Everyone likes Prot, uh, especially the children. And especially the dog, because I don't know if you remember this, but he has the ability to uh, understand what the dog is saying. Mm-hmm. The dog is barking, and he's, uh, he's interpreting. I, I remember very little about mm-hmm. this movie. This sounds a lot like What About Bob, though. And it's making me want to watch What About Bob the more I hear you talk about mm-hmm. K-Pax. So I like that, because I like wanting to okay. watch What well, About Bob. Well, it's interesting. It's not my intention at all. What's happening? It's a bycatch. There is a, there is it's like a, a bycatch. Uh, there is an unfortunate moment when he freaks out uh, when the children get a little too close to some sprinklers, mm-hmm. and that is revealed later to be... Uh, Perhaps a remnant of his human life. Perhaps a part of his uh, psychosis. Hmm. We don't know. It's ambiguous. They don't answer that question for us. They don't answer it clearly. What if all of school was just ambiguous from the time you're like in kindergarten? What's the answer? No whatever, one knows. Whatever you, whatever you think it should right. mean there, what's Johnny. Your inter- what's your interpretation of this math problem? Oh, I've heard things, dude. I was talking to all sorts of teachers because really? I was up at camp, you know, which turned out to be a, uh, like a reunion. Oh, sure. I was talking to teachers. Every single one, I'm not naming names here, but every single teacher I talked to that was in the public school system is f- furious really? and just feels trapped and is just th- miserable with Why? the curriculum that's being shoved. I was talking to a kindergarten teacher and they're like, yeah, sh- they're making us teach Picasso to kindergartners. And we have to like, we have to say, what, tell what do you- Tell us a little bit about Picasso this year. He's a first grader. Like they have to like not just like you know this is art and like but like what are your thoughts on it and, and do like write something about it and she's like the, my friend of mine mm-hmm. who was telling me about it and she's like ninety nine percent there's like one or two gifted kids in there who like want to go sure. along but the rest of the kids are just like, like picking like the their colors, nose and yeah. yeah it's just absolutely yeah, I that that's just one account of many many accounts that I heard very fa- interesting stuff all right I don't know where, where did that come from uh, K Pax but why did I say, say that uh, what if school is ambiguous. Oh, what if all school was just that big? Well, what do you think it means, Scarlett? Yeah. So yeah, K-Pax is one of those movies that I'll admit it's not very good. It's not great, and it's not even good, but ah, there's some good stuff in there. It's just waiting to break out. Yeah. And pretty much every movie has at least a three-minute sizzle reel or yeah, that's you can good put point. together. Like, that's, that's ironically what, that's called enough, a trailer. A bad trailer. I watched the trailer uh, yesterday. Oh, that's funny. That yeah. is ironic. Hey, this just in. What about Bob? No barbecue scene that I could find. I That's did find impossible. the dinner scene, of course, and that actually I think made my top five uh, dinner scenes that we did some time ago. How did you search for that? Uh, I, I don't know. What, how do you think I might have searched for it, Brian? Just Google. Uh, you're actually asking? Uh, yeah, how did you do it? Did you look at IMDb and our keywords? Uh, YouTube. What about okay. Bob barbecue scene? So. And that's not maybe the most scientific way, but you know, while I'm doing a show here and producing and pushing buttons and trying to you know make things uh, go, mm-hmm. all right, where are we? We're okay. right here, We're number two for me. What about Bob? Oh, this is a good one. I'd be kind of surprised, a little disappointed if 19. Oh, look at that, my number three and my number two, both 1990. Ooh. Easy, Andy. Easy. The Relax. good year for uh, barbecue scenes and films. I got to tell you that 1990 because you got the Goodfellas over there, and then you got Edward Scissorhands with oh. an amazing barbecue scene. This is satire. This is. Uh, what uh, a twisted mind such as Tim Burton in his prime would think of as a suburban uh, gathering. A lot of um, barbecues, we didn't really even give a background. I would have, you know what, I would have liked to, I'd like to have uh, maybe kind of looked into a little uh, history of the barbecue. Like, Interesting. Yeah, you know, like where it all began. Like the first uh, the first like, years where like people actually started having things in their backyard of the suburb, suburb, suburban Yeah, it feels homes. very American, but I know like the, uh, the gauchos in South America used to like grill on their... So on their shields, mm-hmm. you know, what I mean? and they skewer the meat and they grill on their shields. So oh, that's interesting. Kind of early barbecues. And there's a little vents in there. Yeah. Oh, like imagine like the grease and stuff going inside your suit, plus the stuff that's already in your suit when you take it off to cook on your suit. On, on their shields. Oh, their shields. Yeah, what do you think I said? I thought I thought you were, I was thinking like the arm, the body oh, armor no. for some reason. The which chain is mail. F- foolish. No, not the chain mail, but like the, the actual chest plates and maybe. Oh, like I the, see. The helmet. As yeah. far as I know, it was on their uh, on their shields. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. All right. Like those authentic shields that I saw when I was in Iceland? The ones you took, yeah. <laughs> off, off the wall. Edward Scissorhands, just a great scene. It's so much fun for so many different reasons. It's it's taking a, a look at what uh, a, a barbecue would be in a an ultra uh, suburban uh, community. And all the gossip and all the ladies coming over who wanted a piece of this new 
uh, Edward Scissorhands, who doesn't, you know, belong in their neighborhood at all. And they're like all kind he of like a curiosity. And he's over there and he's talking to the dad and, he, and he's over there at the grill at one point and he's got like his scissor hands are being used as shish kebabs. Mm-hmm. And all the, uh, the, the, the moms in the uh, neighborhood are coming up and feeding him. They all want a piece of Edward Scissorhands. And uh, they're talking about, you know, like what the, uh, if, if his hands would be cold or, or hot the things that they could undo, the damage they could do, perhaps. You know, they're, they're getting a little uh, randy over there. Little talking. Racy. Yeah. So little blue. That's my number My number two is Edward Scissorhands. Uh, like, if if you were talking to somebody who had no idea what a barbecue gathering was, mm. this would be, and I don't know if it's a tropey thing, and I guess it probably is more tropey and unrealistic in movies as it is in real life when you have a barbecue, because every barbecue I've ever been a part of, everyone knows each other, and it's usually like a party throwing. Right. It's not like maybe it was back in the fifties though, where it's like the neighborhood comes. Oh over. sure, everyone so come over. You can meet the neighbors. People you don't really even know. Mm. Yeah, you're getting to know at this barbecue. But Interesting. I've never been to one like that where it's just like, hey, if you live in like within a two block radius, you're allowed, you know, invited over. Yeah, the closest I probably came to that was in college, like you know, doing like a barbecue at the frat house. Terrible. I mean, meet people. awful. Meet people. Meet people. Meet people. It works on two meet. levels, though. And some meat cutes as well. I'll, t- I'll tell you what. My number one is one of your 1990 films. No. It is. One of the ones that I already did? Yes. Is it the goodies? It is. Yeah. Goodfellas, number one. It's fantastic. First of all, this is a barbecue I want to be at. The, the, the sizzling, you know, the sausage was uh, uh, spiraling Coiled. on the grill, but the middle was the cast iron skillet with all the peppers and onions. Mm-hmm. They're good there, just stirring the peppers and onions to go with the perfect they know how to eat. grilled sausage sandwich. Or, or, or they might say a sandwich. Mm-hmm. But uh, either way, like it's, it's a great scene because it's, like you alluded to, it's exposition. It's crucial exposition yeah. to the film. Some of the best, maybe, in the whole movie. But that it's also a lot. an amazing tableau of, like, that time mm-hmm. and those guys and the relationships. And, you know, so much is said with just a nod. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? There's just poly nods. And uh, we're going to play a clip. No, I, I yeah, oh. don't, don't, don't mind me. I'm, right. I'm doing many things over here. Right? I thought you were going to play some good I, things. Uh, no, I wish I could. Oh. Uh, sorry. Uh, Polly nods, and then the other guy nods, and so much is said, but just a nod. You know, pro- 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 probably a, uh, some sort of union deal was just struck right there. You know what? I feel like we all got to see. We all got to. It's it's too much, right? It's like, only a minute long. Yeah, but I'm saying, like, you talking about it and, like, wetting the appetite. Like, we're just, here we go. Here we go. Say that again because I didn't. There I didn't, it is, and young yeah. Henry Hill being dispatched to uh, relay some information. You know, what I was thinking when I when I watched this clip earlier this week is Paulie's method of business is so far removed from how I like to do business, right. and I think a lot of people like to do business. And I'm, I'm, I was wondering if anyone modeled their have a modeled their business tendencies off of like that scene sure. and Paulie in particular, where they keep everything secret and they keep all the information. Only themselves. one person knows. Because I I don't like meetings. Per se, like like the idea of having a job where like, you're getting pulled into meetings, and I see my you know my wife who's uh, pulled into meetings all the time, but like having creative meetings and the sounding boards and trying to like sure. figure out it, it's the best. It's right. like the more minds in the room, the better, and that's totally against every yeah. way that Paulie went around business, went about business, right? That's right. Yeah, and they wanted as few people to know as possible. All right, that's your number one, that's huh? Number one. Well, as, as far as I'm concerned, uh, it's a very good scene, but you got you got. Uh, Edward Scissorhands above it. Yeah. It's a great scene, remember? It's a great scene. I left it off. It pops. What are you going to do? A lot of color. Pops. I need a lot of color. And uh, God, some of those scenes, some of those shots in Edward Scissorhands, it's, it's, it is a bit of a masterpiece, that movie. Underrated. All these years later, I think, you know, people think of Tim Burton. I don't know if it comes up uh, super quick. Maybe it does. I don't know. It's no Batman. You know what else? And it's not on your list, so I can talk about it on my ulcer ends, but... 
Uh, and then I'll get to my number one here in a second. I'm going to play a clip. But I, I had uh, a realization this week that I, I was completely unfair to, <laughs> this is going to sound absurd that I'm even bringing this up, to you uh, every week. We all know that. But Adam Sandler's canon mm. and Billy Madison came out and I absolutely was head over the heels. heels. I loved, watched it like, you know, numerous times in the theater and just couldn't get enough of that, that Billy Madison. Every movie that came out after didn't hold a candle to it. And I kept wanting Billy yeah. Madison, never got Billy Madison. Watching clips from Waterboy this week, I'm like, there's a lot to love just in that one little scene. Very and fun. I bet I would have liked it so much, all of his all of his movies. If I go back and watch them now, I bet there's so much for me to love there. But I was just at the time going, I want more Billy Madison. Well, I imagine Atticus will be in the sweet spot for that. And also nah, that's for a, that. it's a little, little, little above his pay grade. Well, but look at what I'm doing too, Brian. You realize the, uh, the hypocrisy here? What's that? I'm like, I wanted more of the same. That's true. And now Where I'm like, no, I'm tired of more of the same. I will not watch your reboots, prequels, and sequels. You weren't willing to let the man uh, grow. I guess I've grown. All right. So not my number one, and Please. this is my number one, and it is a little more es esoteric as far as like how far back it goes. Because we go back to 1956 was my number one. Boom. Uh, and it was going to be on the list, I thought, because I love the movie Giant so much. Oh, I love I Giant. Say Giant is fantastic. It's uh, it's Rock Hudson and, and, and James Dean. You try to get me to watch this. Elizabeth like Taylor. It is very, very long. But it does what modern day uh, series, like, you know, shows that have five seasons to do arcs. It does it in three hours and 20 minutes or whatever with two very strong characters and Rock Hudson and James Dean. And uh, the scene I'm going to play is just the... It's just the best example, the biggest example I could find of a barbecue uh, in all, of, all all the research that I did this week. Uh, and those, uh, like I said, like I uh, I teased, uh, there, there's a bit of a uh, explanation of where the word barbecue comes oh, from early please. on in this clip you're about to hear. Please. And what it is, it's um, uh, Elizabeth Taylor's character uh, just uh, recently married Rock Hudson's character. He owns this like ranch in the middle of Texas. Like they, they make mention that their closest neighbors are 50 miles away, right? James Dean is one of their neighbors who uh, he's he's not a part of the barbecue, but he is uh, illustrated and portrayed in his car sitting probably 50 yards away, just relaxing, being cool guy, James Dean. It's my favorite James Dean uh, performance, even though there's only three to choose from, but I love him in this. Uh, and so she's meet. It's a bit of fish out of water. She's meeting everybody. Um, do you remember that scene in Buffalo 66 where she's being fed tripe? Kind of. Yeah. And At the dinner table? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Vincent Gallo just being the absolute, Billy Brown being the absolute oh, disgusting, horrific human being that he has in that, that scene. He keeps making her eat more tripe when she's already doing him a favor. Anyways, it's a little bit of that in that. We're seeing the fish out of water. She's fancy. She's uh, from back east, I believe. Forgive me, it's been a number of years since I've seen this, but we're seeing her react to Texas culture. Oh. And what's more... Texas the barbecues and vice versa, right? So here's the clip I'm going to play. I have to play it directly. Um, it's not a clip from the old, I won't say where it's from, just not, to, I don't want to get us in. in. All right, so I'll just complete a quick. Please. It's uh, fair use. Here we go. And uh, it's, it's coming here in a second. The, d the dialogue will be coming in. I wish you could see this, Brian. So they're, what they're doing is they're unwrapping a, a, a cow head. That's a calf's head, he says. That is... That, so it's brains and they're sure sweet. That's barbacoa. Elizabeth Taylor's not hungry. And then the brains come out of the, the head and put on her plate. <laughs> and she faints. And in an absurd fashion, she faints. And it, is, I mean, it, it is of its time, 19, oh, 1956. It? But, yeah, it's, it's got the uh, um, number of uh, tables out there and the pastor. And, like, you know, the whole town is there. It's, it's just, it looks like authentic old. And plus, this thing takes place in, like, the 18-somethings, you know, late 1800s, early 1900s. So it's, uh, it's a fantastic barbecue scene. All right. Brains I'm looking, coming right out of that calf's head. I'm looking at Wikipedia, and yes, it does come from the word barbacoa. I wish I had done this research before, like Anderson said. But yeah, traditional barbacoa involves digging a hole in the ground and placing some meat inside of it. Isn't that strange that that's how they cooked in uh, Hawaii, too, with the luau, right? Indeed. I'd imagine a bunch of cultures learn that you can 
cook yeah. meat on well the in the hot ground, which yeah. is baking in the sun. Those are like early like clay ovens almost. Well, I think there was some fire element underneath, you know, coals or yeah. Whatever. A lot of time they put the coals, and I got mm-hmm. with the luau's. They do. Never been to a luau. No, uh, I've been I, to one luau, and it was in uh, Thousand Oaks, California. So that is not a traditional. Some drunkards, and there was a lot of meth and cocaine at that party as well. And they 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 were trying to have a luau in their backyard. Oh, how'd it go? I, it, the meat was raw. Oh, ooh. yeah. I would expect the other way. I didn't cooked. I didn't partake. I saw I saw them pull out the pig though, and it was not well cooked. I think they ended up microwaving. <laughs> So traditional. So traditional. All right. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's. oh, do we have the listener list? Yes, we do. Uh, oh, you got it? Okay, cool. Well, I know that it exists. Well, can you, can you read it for us? Find this that would be, find that'd be nice. We might not have it. Do we have it's it? It's in Avery's notes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. List. He took care of us. All right, good. Oh, I stepped all over the listeners list. I'm so sorry, So many guys. suggestions, over 30 different scenes. Uh, number five, Office Space. Good, good, good barbecue. Uh, yeah, it's a good barbecue, plus it's where the infamous O scene um, comes from. So, And it's also fun because it's uh, it's uh, uh, describing minimum security prison to, to the, yes, uh, yes. the two friends. And it's also uh, that's also where we uh, jump, don't jump, jump to conclusions, conclusions right? Yep. A lot of stuff happens in that barbecue right. scene, right? Uh, number four, Waterboy. Number three, Fast... Wait, settle down with the Waterboy. You remember what they were cooking four, in the old Waterboy? Like baby gators? Yeah, gators. Like yeah, full yeah. baby gators. Like oh, not cleaned or anything. She oh. just got them. Kathy Bates just got them on the grill. Gives each each I of them get their own them. gator. Looks good, mama. Number three is all Fast and Furious films. No, that's not a that's not an actual choice. You can't no. have that as an actual choice. Number two is Goodfellas. Number one, fried green tomatoes. Fried green tomatoes. Yeah, it came up in, uh, uh, in my research. I could not find a clip for that one. I did read about that one, and I do kind of remember it, but not well enough. It's been mm. probably 15 years since I've seen fried green. You've seen that fried green, right? When it came out. So good. It's one of those movies that just goes down so smooth. You forget about how good it is. I got to see it again. I it's need to see that scene again. Much like Edward Scissorhands. I saw him when it came out or on video or whatever. And really? I see, I've remember. seen the Edward on a number yeah. of times, so it's always going to be free. I need to show that to the boy once I already have. I'm going to freak him out. I'm doing that. I'm like, hey, buddy, we're going to watch a movie this week. It's, uh, it's called uh, it was, uh, Harry and the Hendersons, which somebody just clicked through, actually. That's right. And he's like, I already saw it, Dad. I'm like, no, you didn't. Uh, what happens? Then he like tells me like key points. I'm like, ah. I, must I did it. watch that with you because I'll put it on and then I'll do work, you know, while sitting on the couch with him. So you should watch watch. Uh, what about Bob? With did, with the boy? Yeah, with the boy. Nah, he enjoy that. He's, he's not there yet. Bill Murray's fun. Okay, I, I don't want to get into like psychosis with the with the boy just yet, you know. All right. Uh, also, rants for you, Briber. I bet also most of them have probably been mentioned at this yes, point. Yes, uh, no, no. but I think I have a couple. The, the oh, birds. neighbors, dude. Oh. Neighbors has a, it's really quick, but it's a great little clip and neighbors. Which, neighbors. by the way, I was looking for the clip because if it was bigger and longer and uncut. Neighbors, the the John Cena movie? No, that's Blockers. No, no, no. no the 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 well, it's Seth Zach, Rogan? Zach Efron and, and and yeah, Rogan. Like everybody's in it, right. and, and uh, uh, it's the frat boys who live next yeah. door. And like, war. I was just I was looking for that scene because it wasn't on uh, the old YouTube's over there. So I was scrubbing through it like on HBO Max or something. It, that movie is so. I remember loving it at the time, but like that's a movie that you love at the time. And then you kind of just move on with your life and forget about it. But it is so good. There are so many funny, like, little moments I in I had there. forgotten completely. My God, is it just really, really good. All right. Huh. So go there's a the- quick little uh, a barbecue scene. Of course, the, the frat boys are barbecuing right. out front. And Rogan's just, like, watering his lawn like the old man. And uh, Efron just kind of looks over at him and he takes his hot dog and he makes it look like his dick for a second and twingles it. That was the entire scene. Fun. But, yeah. Uh, the Burbs is on my also ran list. Uh, Pain and Gain, which is a very funny scene uh, of idiots uh, trying to dispose of um, evidence. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Boys in the Hood. Yeah, Boys in the Hood. It's a very long and it's an important scene, it but it didn't really feel like a fun like barbecue right. scene, right? Uh, and then we got, what else would I have? Baskin. There's a lot of barbecuing in Baskin, Baskin if you recall. Um, actual barbecuing, and then Hachi at Dog's Tale. There's a, a good, a, a sweet scene in that as well. As Terms of Endearment, which is kind of in the same ballpark as Fried Green Tomatoes, mm. chick flicks that work. Bye bye. There you go. Ever seen that Terms of Endearment? No. Mm, it's good. It's that one's be- tear, before my time. Tear a jerker. Mm. That's what Atticus used to call Jillian and I when he get really mad. He'd be like, uh, "You guys are being such." I'd be crying. He's like, "You guys are being such jerkers." <laughs> I'm like, if you only knew what that meant. Today, he gets... <laughs> I'm not going to say it. I'll tell you where. 
Tell me. <sighs> yeah, it's just dumb stuff. It's so much fun having a six-year-old. It's so much fun. Yeah, it's a good time. He had to get in with gi, right? Sure. Because it's karate time, right? He has karate and hockey. And, uh, you know, you, a lot of the time we're like up against it with the clock. So he gets home and uh, I'm like, come on, buddy, put on your gi. Put on your gi. And then he's like halfway there and he kind of pauses, you know, six-year-old, especially sure. boys, I oh think. God. You know, like, yeah. So Now Tess is no better. And then I thought of that. Um, I don't know if you're aware of of the uh, Blink-182 album. It's called Take Off Your Pants. And Jacket. So I'm like, take off your pants and jacket, buddy. And I was just, you know, I'm just kind of like in the kitchen doing my own thing. And I just said the title of the album thinking it's funny. And it's like, Dad, I already took off my pants. And I'm like, oh, Christ, what a... It's hilarious, though, because he doesn't hear, like, the, the inappropriateness yeah. of it at all. It's because, entendre. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. All right. And I'm Do just happy that the wife's not in the room, you know, because I'm like, shit, she's going to catch me. Like, just... Because I'm not, it's not, like, pre-planned. I'm, I'm just, like, you know, putting together a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and just talking, right? Yeah. 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 All right. Fun. I, I regret saying all that whole story. Well, keep it okay. in, Avery. Uh, you want to gamble? Yeah, let's do that. We got notes, right? That are going to help us along. I got it right here. All right, cool. Uh, Fast X was the movie we gambled on last week. You insanely said 68. I said 49. With 231 reviews, the actual Rotten Tomato score is 54%, making me the winner. Mm -hmm. Winner. The cheating continues. I don't, you, there was no you? score, actually, if you remember last time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's no score. Well, and what, uh, Fast X. And what, what is the actual score now? Uh, the actual score is 53. No, 54. 54. So. Wow. And you went and saw it knowing that that's interesting. I, I don't want to hurt the show. Yeah, it's true. I'm glad that you, look, if you were going to, truth be told, I, I, if you were banning it and I was banning it too, it would become a whole, this would become a different show. It's true. I don't would you have fallen on the grenade at that point and gone to see it? I mean, I'm gonna, I, I'd be, I made a proclamation, Brian. All right. I'm going to try and stick with it. But yeah, somebody has to have seen to have at least talk to Avery about it. Well, this is a tough season for you then because we have another uh, reboot coming out uh, this week. We're gambling on The Little Mermaid. Yeah, there's no, I zero. you should have zero interest in this other than taking Tessa. No. She doesn't have to see it. I mean, with you. Oh, no, she very much wants to. Okay, well, that's great. You can have a nice little uh, yeah. you know, family outing. Do you got to bring it to the program? Yeah. Okay. Well, it'd be hurting the program. I heard Billy Burr talking about how great Super Mario Brothers was, but he doesn't have much yeah. of a reference. You're about to find out. No, you're not going to review that movie like all these weeks later. Maybe. You're hurting the show. I doubt it. Oh, I know it. What do you think for The Little Mermaid? You got a number? You got a number? Is this critic proof? Sometimes movies... We were admonished for using critic proof a while Fuck ago. That. Sometimes movies that go for that critic proof angle can be punished a little bit. I think it's... I, I know nothing. Remember, it, the first trailer was on during the Oscars. And I'm like, oh, I missed that movie. Was it the Oscar or the Super Bowl? No, it was because I was with you, and I wasn't oh. with you. Either. And you're like, it hasn't come out yet. This is like a teaser. I thought it had already come and gone. I was, uh, I was delighted to have already missed that wave. <laughs> wave. Yeah. yeah. All right, I got a number. Do you? Is, that, is 100 too high? Are you pumped for this? Do you know who directed it or anything? Yeah, Rob Marshall. Oh, uh, Jesus Christ. Of Chicago. Yeah, yeah. Oh. And I also know that it's two hours and 15 minutes, hmm. which feels long for a PG movie. Maybe it's got a lot to say. Maybe it does. Have I'm you watched to... Splash with Tessa yet? I have not, but we watched the actual Little Mermaid uh, animated film many times. Have you, have you get to watch Splash? Probably not. I mean, someday maybe. Did you like Splash? Sure. I don't know that Tessa would love it. You don't think so? Maybe. Why not? I have thought about it in years. Slippery little suckers. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's uh, There's a mango on my shoulder. Wait, Slippery Little Suckers is a pretty woman. Is a pretty woman? Yeah. Well, there's something happened. She like eats a lobster, like shell yeah. and all. There's like there's a funny yeah, scene like she, involving. Yeah, like she digs into a lobster, like in a fine restaurant. You're right. Yeah, conflated the two. Mm. All right, I got a number. What do you got? All right, let's go. My first instinct. All righty, on three, mm. one, two, eighty-three. 81. Oh. All right, do we have a number? Well, actually, I actually have no. Push refresh. Let's see if it's changed. I have no idea. All right. RT. You Let said 81. Mermaid. Let the mermaid. I said. Oh, wow. Huh. Oh, no. What? Is this oh, no, because you're losing or oh, no, because you have to go see it? <laughs> Which one is it? It's one of those two. With. Mm -hmm. How many votes? Oh, that's the audience score. Oh, oh I think it. Is it already out? Like in China? Oh, this is the China's not releasing this. 
Interesting. Oh, you're looking at the uh, the original? No. The weird. Okay, sorry. I just googled the Little Mermaid 2023. Google lists a uh, Rotten Tomato score of 40 percent. When I click on that, it's going to Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, zero reviews and audience score of 55. But the poster is from the 19. I don't know what the fuck this is. Are the. Uh, hmm. All right. This well. is not right. This is not. Right. Hold on. I'm going to do something I never do. I'm going to go to the home page. Yeah, go to your home page. Um, I don't think any of this is really important in the grand scheme. I'm kind of curious, but Google can't be trusted anymore, right? Too much fucking around going on with the paid advertisement and getting your your numbers and the algorithm and you can't find what you really want anymore. It's, it's okay. getting more and more difficult. Okay, actually, okay, so, okay, we have a score. Google linked to the wrong, a rare mistake. I don't see this often on Google. I'm telling you, Google's they, less and less reliable. They linked to the wrong um, movie. It was like a sequel from 92. Uh, this one already has 101 reviews. Mm-hmm. Score of 70%. Hmm. 70. Sounds about right. I was going to say 71, but I feel like I've done that in like the last three weeks in a row. So now that I finally got away from it. Jillian uh, put five bucks on black in uh, Vegas. Hit 26, no, on red. Hit 26, which is black. Okay. So she asked Atticus, very illegal, I know, but he was like, you know, we were just outside the casino sure. and she was like right there on the, and she goes, what number? I Should I do red or black? And, and he says red again. She's like, are you sure? So she puts her last five bucks. 26 again. What the? What are the chances? What are the, what are the chances of that? Roll, roll, run. I know. That was a good pull right there. It was a pretty good pull there. Bad. She screamed very loud too, <laughs> Julian, but it didn't go in her favor. All right. Let's get out of here. All right. Uh, 70, huh? How do you yeah, feel about 70. that? Is that good or bad? I feel good that I'm going to win gambling. but Yeah, it's I'd, actually I'd, kind of a perfect score for you. It's better than average, yep. and uh, you're going to win gambling. I bet it's fun. Yeah? You think it's fun? I bet it's fun. I bet there's a lot of singing. A lot I, of singing I and swimming. there's actually more singing in this movie. Is there going to be any dialogue, or is it just all the swimming and singing? Dude, it's two hours and 15 minutes. I can't remember. Does Chicago, do they, do they take a breath and talk, or is it like a full-on opera? The, 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 there is dialogue, but it is sung. Oh, well, so they, they, don't, they don't take a break. A break. They, it's... it's all the way through. It is set to music. What's worse? I mean, I guess your brain can kind of be like, all right, this is just the language they speak in this universe, right? Like everyone sings to communicate. Oh, sure. I mean, I think it's worse when they're actually just talking like you and I, and then all of a sudden you can feel it coming. It it's like, oh, no, oh, here it comes. Yeah. The music swells. I think I'd, if I had to choose one or the other, it would be where it's just a constant because my brain would just kind of flip. This, you know what I mean? It's like where you wear those glasses. Mm. You, ever, you ever hear about that? And it no. makes everything upside down. Oh, sure. And then after a while, your brain will flip. Well, because the image you see in your brain is upside down. Okay, but what your happens is your brain it. adjusts, and then like you get to the point where you can ride a bike and yep. stuff. Where, and then you take them off, and everything's upside down. How weird is that? I wonder if. How weird is that, though, Brian? I feel like you're not tracking. No, that's I, fucking I, bizarre. I completely understand. But what, what what's it? interesting is like it takes three or four. It took like three or four hours for people's brains to flip when you're wearing the glasses right. from it to be upside down or flip the, the brain. I'd be scared. Like, is it, I'm yeah. gonna go back. Am I gonna walk I, into a wall? And then take. Well, not even that. Like, if your brain is actually changing something so mad, rewiring something so that everything you're seeing upside down is now right side up right. when looking through these glasses and make everything upside down. Took like three or four hours for the brain to adjust, and, and this is going off of something I read or learned in school like twenty years ago. Mm. And How do you feel about that? When you take the glasses off, everything is now upside down Ooh. without the glasses, which would scare the fuck out of me. But what was interesting is that it only took like a half hour for the brain to readjust back to what it used to be. Makes you think. Do now we'll we'll never know this, but do babies see things upside down because their their brain hasn't trained their eyes? Well, do they see upside down or right side up when they're in the womb? I mean, it's just like. Yeah, that's that's a good one. So, uh, does gravity? End babies up? don't use their eyes in the womb, right? They're closed. But you would think, without hearing about that little interesting study, which knowing me, like there, maybe that never even happened. I wonder if I read about that study and they're like, uh, "It was a hoax uh, done by hippies in the '60s." Uh, I have a lot of it. I mean, you have very aptly said that I, uh, I, I, I'm a perpetual like uh, spreader out. of that's erroneous right. information. That is true. But I mean, this is a prime example. Like I, I heard this. Habitual. Habitual. I heard this. That's super fascinating. Stuck in my brain forever. And then a lot of the time, the most interesting things that you you know you hear oh, yeah. in passing, they're interesting because they're not true. Uh, have you seen Lesnar Art this week? No, but I want to. I want to just go back to like you know your brain can accept. After Please. a while, your brain will accept the fact that they, everyone. That's how they communicate. They sing, so it's not the constant okay. jarring of like, oh my god, here they go again. They're about to start singing, right? See yeah, like like Hamilton is a great example. Yeah, yeah, I was singing throughout. I've not seen the Lesnar Art. 
It's very good. Ludwig Van, Ludwig Van Beto, uh, oh. Bacon uh, strikes again. What is this? What is this? Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> that is fantastic. We come to this place. Oh, I love seeing her face looking at that. <laughs> and they're looking back at her. Good stuff. Do you think Ludwig. A, do you think there's a world? I will be su- suing you, though. You'll be hearing from my doctor. Do you think there's a world where Nicole Kidman is seeing your film? Um, probably not. Probably not, but I think that I would I would love to see a list of some people like recognizable names that have seen. I it. was just about that to say, are you fun. aware who's the most famous person you're aware I'm not of? I'm w- aware of none. Oh, really? Yeah, but it's not like I went searching. It's not like I have alerts for my name like you do. So who knows? But you I'm say not, like it's a bad thing. Uh, re- searching for your name and mm-hmm. having alerts right. pop off. It's not a great. Well, thing, you know, it's like part of your morning routine. Some people get up and they stretch. Some people drink uh, coffee. I immediately Google myself. Yeah. Yeah. In the shower? Oh, no, before the shower. Right. Thank you to our listeners for downloading and listening. Appreciate you guys. Hope you enjoyed Top 5 Barbecue Scenes. Ludwig, great job as always, my friend. Check it out over at AndersonandBrian.com. Light Out for the Territory is our featured artist this week. Check them out, AndersonandBrian.com. Uh, lots of good stuff going on over at Patreon. Check us out at Patreon.com slash The Film Vault. Anderson and Brian com is the website. Anderson and Brian is the TikTok. Anderson and Brian is the Instagram. The Film Vault, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube is the Film Vault Podcast. Lots of good stuff going on out there. Thank you to all of our uh, Patreon listeners. Mike Cole, thank you for uh, keeping the game links to help me look up. Uh, I was able to see exactly when I assigned you uh, K Pax. Thanks to you, Von- Giovanni, Jesus. for the long emails. Appreciate that. Uh, Mitch Burns for all you do. Eric Kath, killing it over on YouTube. George I, George M. Stratton was uh, responsible for the upside down glasses experiment, and uh, oh. yes, it is all true. It is all true. It is all true. Yeah. So stop your. Uh, I know you're probably already five uh, paragraphs in there, Geo, but uh, got it. Got it. Send it anyway. Didn't get much from Geo this week. Maybe he knew I was grieving. I got a. F- I got a few. All right. Hey. All right. Hey. Hey. Until next time. What else? No, not until oh. next time. Just yet, Bri-Bri. What else we got? We got, we got, to ask, uh, got to ask our friend Kayla to please wake up. Kayla! Come on, Kayla. Kayla. I know you dozed off there, Anderson. was waxing about upside down glasses. That was the most interesting part of the entire program. Could, could, could be argued, especially now that we know it's not erroneous. I bet a lot. I bet a percentage of our listeners do you think knew that uh, about that experience? Well, I'm going to go really low. I'm going to say <laughs> 18%. You, if I was wearing upside down glasses right now, you would look uh, almost normal. You got like, the a beard. Light, like a light bulb hanging from the ceiling. You got the beard there, and you got the uh, no hair up top. You look That's like right. you have a big, big chin. That's right. Look at like a, a fuzzy head and a uh, clean shaven up top. That's right. What are you doing for Van Gogh? Okay. Think he's going to keep this part in? Or you think, uh, Avery? If he knows what's good for him. This is a test, Avery. I hope Come you on, cut Kay- this because uh, we've, already, we've already done the part that, 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 that stops it. <laughs>